Hey everybody, how's FFDC going? Having fun? All right, I am super excited to be here, and I'm super excited um, to talk a bit about a side of Flutterflow that not so many people get to see, and that's our work with Enterprise. My name's Cody, and I'm a solution consultant working with the enterprise and design teams here at Flutterflow. I've been working at the company for just over a year now, and I've been working in Flutterflow, building, for just under two years. What I'll be discussing today is why enterprises are choosing to build their experiences and their complex products in Flutterflow. And I'd like to start by talking about radios. I was recently listening to a podcast with Henry Modison, who's the head of design at Perplexity AI. Henry was talking about the competitive landscape of radios in the mid 20th century. He noted that the technology behind radios at the time was already a solved problem. Every manufacturer had access to the same technology and the same radio frequencies as everybody else. Now what that led to was a bit of an explosion in industrial design, right? What set one radio apart from the other wasn't the underlying technology, it was the design, the form and the function. And this was a bit of a unique phenomenon, right? Usually because tech evolves so quickly, it's the technology itself that is the differentiator, but here design was the competitive edge. Now Henry drew parallels between this and where AI hardware design is today, but I actually see a similar link with where we are in software development today. What do I mean by that? With Gen AI, open source tools and platforms like Flutterflow that are lowering the barrier of entry for building powerful products, I think the playing field's being leveled again. And if that's true, I guess the question is what becomes the new competitive advantage? How do companies, big or small, attract customers and retain employees in this age of Gen AI and kind of competitive and technical parity? My argument is that experiences are the new different, differentiating factor. Does the product do what it needs to do? but also is the experience consistent across devices? But most importantly, is it delightful? Do users enjoy getting to use the app or do they dread having to open the app? At Flutterflow, we refer to this as experience engineering. And it's through this lens that I want to explore why enterprises are choosing Flutterflow to build the products. So a few weeks ago, I gave myself a challenge. I wanted to put myself in the shoes of our enterprise customers, and I wanted to see what it's truly like to build a complex product in Flutterflow. What you see on the screen behind me is the result of that challenge. A consumer banking app with interesting, somewhat impractical interactions and animations. I feel like Will would judge me quite a bit. And an internal RFP management uh, platform where teams can kind of work together and leverage AI to draft proposals and respond to RFPs. Now, I'm an ex-management consultant, so naturally a platform for drafting proposals is very close to my heart. It is incredible the speed at which you can create these modern interactive interfaces in Flutterflow. But I quickly realized that building sleek interfaces is one thing. Building enterprise-grade, production-ready products that handle real infrastructure complexity is a whole different ballgame. So ultimately, what these challenges and, and working with our customers has really reinforced to me is enter building enterprise-grade products is really hard. It's not just about design and functionality. It's about managing security, dealing with legacy infrastructure, and delivering a quality experience that can scale from thousands of employees to millions of users. So in the face of all this complexity, let's get right to it. Why are companies choosing Flutterflow? I think it comes down to four key themes. Speed, talent, governance, and culture. Let's quickly go over each one. Speed. Flutterflow shortens the time it takes to go from idea to functional high fidelity prototype. 
bypassing a lot of the traditional design, develop, handoff complexity. It also accelerates turning those prototypes into production-ready features, shrinking feedback loops and shrinking iteration cycles. Talent. Flutterflow clarifies roles within a team. What do I mean by that? Developers can focus on business logic, and designers can have control over the pixel-perfect experience. It helps teams focus on what they do best without worrying about minor details like whether or not that border radius should be six pixels or eight pixels. Governance. Flutterflow allows companies to create a centralized visual library for product development, helping them manage components, theming, integrations, and business logic across teams. This reduces duplication of effort and ultimately helps the customer experience be more consistent. Finally, culture. Flutterflow is reshaping how organizations think about timelines. Teams are realizing that they can deliver over 10 to 20 pro projects a year, rather than just two or three. It's also expanding their imagination with respect to what they're actually activating out of their idea pipelines. Something else that we're seeing, and that I think is very important, is that Flutterflow is encouraging a sort of run with it culture within teams where employees feel empowered to act on their ideas and build quick prototypes to start conversations within their teams. All right, let's look at some real world examples. While we're limited in what we can share for some of these because some of them are still in-flight projects, I'll walk you through three cases that I think highlight some successes that enterprises are having building in Flutterflow. Let's start with Axis Bank. Axis is one of India's largest banks, reaching over a billion people. Their mobile banking app has over 78 million downloads. That's double the population of my home country, Canada. At that scale, modernizing an app isn't just about making it look better. It's about ensuring nothing breaks for the millions of users that rely on it daily. Now, Axis needed to modernize key user journeys like payment flows and consolidated service views without disrupting the experience of their 20 million monthly active users. With a team of 20 de developers, they built and seamlessly integrated these journeys into their existing app using Flutterflow. And what was the result? Axis continues to have the world's highest rated mobile banking app on the Google Play Store with a rating of 4.8. They have a 4.7 on the iOS App Store. What you're seeing behind me is a look at one of the new modules they built. As you can see, it has multiple languages, the ability to generate and scan QR codes to initiate payments, and even NFC-powered tap-to-pay functionality. All of this integrated into a live, complex app with hundreds of screens being used by millions of users. NTUC Fairprice. NTUC is the largest supermarket chain in Singapore. Their use case was a little bit different. They wanted to build an internal application for their employees. Now, employee experience is just as important as customer experience when it comes to digital products these days. So NTUC wanted to build an engagement super app for their 14,000 employees. The challenge was integrating it with their existing enterprise systems, from authentication, leveraging multiple data sources, all while delivering a smooth AI-powered experience. With just one developer, they built the platform in four months. Lastly, ICICI Prudential Asset Management. They needed to build an entire wealth management app for both iOS and Android platforms. Now in banking, delivering secure, compliant products isn't optional, it's a regulatory requirement. So they needed to int integrate the app into their existing CICD pipeline while ensuring compliance and managing a fairly rapid release cycle. Now people are often curious about just how big products built in Flutterflow can be. So let's take a look at some numbers. This application included 250 pages 
300 components, and 350 API endpoints. Not only that, the project leverages 630 custom functions, 60 custom actions, and only 13 custom widgets. In total, this project produced over 750,000 lines of Dart code. Now, this was a massive undertaking by the product team, and it's a true testament to just how big pro products built in Flutterflow can get to. Now, in each of these examples, the real differentiator wasn't just speed or functionality. It was how small teams with short timelines built high-quality experiences despite infrastructure and regulatory constraints. And just to wrap things up, and going back to my radio analogy, I think we're coming into an age of competitive parity when it comes to digital products. What's going to give one product the edge over the other is the experience that it provides its users. Flutterflow is helping organizations cut through complexity to deliver those experiences. Thanks for the time. Bring it.